Hello my trash pandas and welcome back to the shop. Today I have another video that I'm super jazzed about sharing. We are scrapping a mountain of motors for scrap copper. Why so excited about that? Haven't we already done a motor video? Well, yes, but this is a collection from all of the devices that I've saved the motors from for months and months and months and I can't wait to get it out of here. But also I have a new tool that I'm pretty hopeful will speed things up a lot. The last time we did it, it was purely with hand tools and that was fine. So I'm probably gonna do one and compare how long it takes to do that with hand tools and compare how long it takes, well, how about how many I can get done in the same amount of time as that hand tool one? Probably, probably really wanna know what it is. Probably half of you already do. Well, let's get into it and see how we do. So we're going to start with a standard arse motor, as well as our standard arse gloves, a standard pair of glasses, and I do have my respirator today, because we don't want to be inhaling all this dust, and there is going to be dust. So we're going to need to shuck this motor. You know what? Hearing protection is important too. Interesting. Ba bam. So there's wires on out of there. We got some steel. We got some dirty aluminum. I might separate some of the aluminum. We'll see later. But this is the part that we're excited about. Unfortunately, this motor is mostly aluminum with a little bit of copper. Seems like it's probably not worth bothering with. Let's try this one. There. That's what I wanted. Now, what do we do with this? Well. Now, normally this is the part where I would take the uh, the angle grinder and slice one side off and then cry about not having an air chisel for a little while and start going at it with, uh, with a hammer and some punches. However, that's not what we're doing today because today I am excited to try out my new toy. It turns out you don't need an air chisel necessarily. I have here a rotary hammer. And if you get one that has three functions on the selector dial, you can get one that's just a hammer function with no rotation. So that means I've got an electric hammer with some chisel bits, and I'm really hoping this speeds things along. It wasn't that expensive. I think I paid, yeah, I'm about 100 bucks in because I got it used, but that's not that much when you think about how much we're gonna make off of these. So let's see how quickly we can go through a whole bucket of motors with the right tools and how much we can make. Scrap copper, let's go. Turns out this one's aluminum too. I'm still gonna try it. Works all right on aluminum anyway. Well, that was pretty easy with a few caveats. Uh, number one, this is all aluminum windings, so that's gonna go into the dirty aluminum bucket, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to test that before we get right into it. But it already started, so I wanted to see how it worked. And then I think pointing it straight down is gonna work a lot better. And 
Uh, this piece was just slicing stuff up, so I'm going to modify this a little bit so it does less cutting and more straight pushing with a, with a flatter end. This thing definitely takes some technique and some getting used to. Um, but I didn't have to do any bashing, so I think that's a huge win. I'm going to move this because um, I need better angles and I think the floor is the way to go. Okay, so clearly this needs a little work because this wrecking blade just isn't slicing through them as much as I wanted it to. Um, so what do I do? I didn't want to lose all that copper dust. All right, back at it again with a slightly different blade. This one is for tile, um, but I thought it might work better, not because of the angle, um, but because it's just a little more. Let's try it. Well, it does seem to work a little better. I'm just gonna go ahead and say this is a lot faster. Maybe, maybe sharpening this blade would be a good idea. I'm not totally sure. I think a different blade. Well, I'm just gonna start flying and see how quickly I can get through a bunch of them.
five and a half, more or less. That's how many I can get through in an hour with this method. Plus, I got this far on two that turned out to be aluminum. So I could probably do six or seven in an hour. I've learned that while this works all right, um, it's not super because it tends to mash some of the uh, windings and make it more difficult to uh, rotary hammer them out afterwards. Now I just need to plow through as many of these as possible. I don't think I'm actually going to do one the old-fashioned way with a hammer and a uh, punch because I don't think there's going to be enough of a difference to, uh, to really try and share that. I'm just going to mash through all of these and see how long it takes total and then, you know, maybe we'll figure out how much we made per hour doing this. Okay, finally done. It's late. That took a lot longer than I thought, so I'm just gonna pack this up and get some weights tomorrow. Now in the morning comes the time-consuming but satisfying task of picking all this up, throwing it in the bin. while also picking through and removing any of the junk to ensure we get the highest grade. Now, there's nothing we can do short of melting it all down to increase the grade higher than number two because all of these windings are coated with a laminate. So there's no benefit in aiming for perfection here, but with a little effort we can make it look a lot better. All this stuff has a high percentage of copper, so we don't want to let that go to waste. Not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but we have it. And that's a little over 31 kilos of copper windings, or 69 pounds. Nice. And it's off to the wire. Alright, we're back. How much did we make? About tree fitty. 330 actually. Um, because I'm getting four dollars and fifty cents a pound for copper, and I had sixty-six pounds plus eight pounds of the not clean stuff. 
yeah, he didn't want to just throw it in. No big deal. Um, and then 14 pounds of light, dirty, 66 pounds of heavy, dirty cast aluminum, and 40 pounds of low-grade motors with plastic. Those are the aluminum-wound ones that I didn't feel like finishing up. And for those of you who are interested, I've got the math. Uh, I'm not going to bother weighing the garbage because it really wasn't much this time around, but a total of roughly 310 pounds of steel, or maybe 140 kilos. At 10 cents a pound, that adds an extra 30 bucks to our total, so 360. Now, altogether, that would be 504 pounds of motors, and if I got 30 cents a pound for those, that would be $151.20. So our profit for doing this was $208 just for taking them all apart. Pretty good. However, it took me somewhere in the range of seven hours to get through all of those. I am sure if you weren't recording yourself, you could probably get through it quite, well, a little bit quicker. And a person could definitely speed themselves up if they had a strong low table with a vise actually mounted to it rather than one that was walking around all the time. <laughs> but for me, $280 divided by seven hours is $30 an hour. So as a rough estimate, these motors are worth about half as much hourly as doing those transformers as before. Still very much worth doing, but I would suggest to anybody who's collecting them, absolutely definitely get a rotary hammer if your situation doesn't allow for air tools, because what a difference that made. Holy cow. It is hard on the wrists, but not as hard as hammering and prying all of those windings out, if I may offer a suggestion. Doing that many all at once was a complete slog, so next time I'm going to do them in batches, maybe 10 at a time or something, just get things set up, do a bunch, and then come back to them later, because um, having to do all that on the floor, my back did not appreciate it. I did it for you, though, because I absolutely appreciate you. Thanks for coming along, and I hope you enjoyed this addition to YouTube's general knowledge on the best ways to scrap motors for scrap copper. <laughs> Looking forward to your comments. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you on the next one. Leave it better than you found it, and keep doing the thing.